everyone. Yes, it's Marianne. And it's also going to be my birthday. Wouldn't you wonder about this headdress otherwise? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. So my, I, my birthday is next week. That's why I was so bummed when uh, I wasn't able to come on and see you guys because it was the Halloween thing and that was my birthday, but all good. It's that part uh, of technology, but hey, I learned something. I'll share it with you guys. My tech guy, when I told him about the little, 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 little thing, he said, Make sure you restart your computer before you have any big deals. So that's your tip, your tech tip from Marianne, which is literally frightening, me giving you tech tips. But hey, I want to share everything, right? So now I'm going to take off this silly thing because I'm getting a headache from it. So who's out there? Say hi. So I know I'm not talking to myself, especially in this strange garb. Again, Mary Ann Kilkenny, Women for Living in Community, do tell me if I'm, <laughs> if I'm repeating myself a lot, <laughs> like I did that one time. Hi, Debbie. Thank you. And Judy. Hi. So, <clears throat> today, I'm going to, oh, I forgot to tell you guys. Welcome here. To here. Women for Living in Community. This is post my sister's visit because I wasn't here last week on Monday because I was out playing with my older sister. And I think probably you saw a picture of her from our last swap party two years ago when there's a picture of her in uh, Charleston when we went to visit there before the world changed a lot. Hey, Nat. Yeah, so... She is great, and we had a good time. Sonia, hi. Just going to say hi to everybody, or at least some of you that are talking to me on the comments. Let me know you're here. I have some questions for you today at the beginning and at the end. I'm curious, all you guys that come, which I really appreciate to hear me every week when I'm here. Um, Tell me what it is that you would like to hear from me. My pearls of wisdom from 15 years in the trenches of community. Do you have questions? What can I help you with? You can put it here in the chat or you could direct message me on this Facebook. So I'm going to ask you at the end. So you might be thinking, hmm. What do I want to hear? What questions do I have? What topics, even? Before I get started in today's fun and games. And that is a little bit kind of like what I did a couple weeks ago that went away because it was copying itself. And that is how the television programs and sitcoms of old might have influenced our housing choices. So it was sort of one of those very insidious kinds of things that had happened because we watched these things, you know, many of us, uh, and watched how various people's lives changed. For instance, women went to work, they weren't in the home, things like that. Um, so lots of things changed and I wanted to tell you about some of my favorite shows and some really interesting little ahas about that. Now these are old television programs and some of the subjects in them might be dated, might be not the most progressive in the way it's approached. So give me, give me, <laughs> give me some leeway on that one, please. <clears throat> Especially on the gender related things. And again, this is more of a sort of a historical perspective of sitcoms, and I'm relating it because I, this is what I talk about, and that is housing. 
Um, so, <clears throat> now, I don't know how many of you would are old enough to remember this, but Leave It to Beaver was from 1957 to 1963, and Father Knows Best was 1954 to 1960. So they were sort of in the same time frame. And if you remember what the family looked like there, and the house looked like went, 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 along, went, went along with it. So there was this sort of insidious little transition point that we probably didn't even pay that much attention to. But I'm going to highlight that, and that is a few little trivia things. Like these are additions to what I've talked about, about the Golden Girls way of living. So there's apartment dwellers, there are people who are in houses, there's people in condos, and then there's the whole variety of were they married couples, they were single childless women, they were divorced women with children, a brother, two brothers that lived with one of their ch children, single woman living with an elder, I'm getting there, uh, platonic housemates, both men and women, and a guy and his dad. So I'm giving you a little bit of hints of what those might be. And at the same time we were talking about housing issues, they also, just like the Golden Girls, really tackled some societal thorny issues at the same time. So when I was uh, doing the picture for this, uh, you might have noticed that there was a picture of someone by the name of Jackie Gleason. Anybody know which, which sitcom that was? Tell me if you do, put it in the chat. And that was 1955 to 56, and it was just one season, and it was in an old, it was actually in black and white, and they, they talked about how dingy the particular apartment really looked. And uh, Debbie's saying, had some questions, and also she's saying, <laughs> yeah, I was very jealous that my family wasn't as perfect as Father Knows Best. I think you uh, might be with a lot of the rest of us, too. Thank you, LaDonna and Nat, for the honeymooners was Jackie Gleason. And they lived in an apartment building. And um, do you remember who lived upstairs? It was another couple, and it seemed like they were in, in Jackie Gleason's uh, apartment a lot. Remember who it was? While you're thinking about that, again, Alice was his wife, and there was, again, we didn't see in those that particular thing, it was an apartment complex, and there weren't any children. For 1955 and 56, that was probably pretty unusual. Yeah. The Kramers, Sonia, whoa-ho. Sonia, and that would be, was it the Kramers? Or was it? The Nortons. Here we have. Uh oh. Who who will know? Who will know? Who will know? This is like a, a trivia pursuit. Ed Norton and his wife Trixie, I think, lived upstairs, and they worked where? In the sewer. He worked in the sewer, and Jackie Gleason was a bus driver. Anyway. Yes, Nortons. It was the Nortons. Yes. <laughs> Close. Thank you, Sonia. So the next persons that lived in an apartment complex would be Mary Tyler Moore. Remember Mary Tyler Moore and her friend Rhoda, and, played by Valerie Hartman, and Phyllis was Cloris Leachman. Now, they, they lived, they were career women. So these, this is something new in the 70 and 70, it was 1970 to 1977. And these women were career women. They weren't married. <gasps> oh my. And it was an, actually, it was an old house that the, it was set in and Mary Tyler Moore had a studio apartment because lots of the scenes were set in a very big room and lots of action was going on. And apparently, uh, all th they, there was three story house and, and the older person lived on the very top. Now, 
That reminded me of something when I was looking at this, and that was when I lived on a college campus in near Chicago. Same kind of thing. We were on the bottom floor of a, of a big bricks house. The next floor up was two women. I don't know what their relationship was. And at the very top was the eldest person who's probably much younger than me today. Uh, so, yeah, I was just dismissing something that was annoying about my stream. So hopefully that didn't screw anything up. Yeah, so moving right along here. Uh, let's see. Yeah. And that was Mary Tyler Moore and in an apartment. Actually, it was an apartment, but it was a big house. Yeah. Am I doing okay? Something. Am I okay, everybody? Tell me. It stopped, Nat said. Are we okay? Okay, I'm just going to keep talking and praying that you guys can hear me. Moving right along here. Otherwise, and next, so I'm, I'm curious uh, if any of these shows remind you of your childhood. If so, let me know. And next one is also set in an apartment complex, and it is Friends. Friends was set in New York, and I think probably that it was one of the things that showed um, our idea of the family that really, really, really changed. So this was set. Uh, this the TV program was set in was it was actually took place 94 to 2004. So this is 27 years ago, and. Debbie says, I'm really beginning to hate the internet. Well, what would we do without it? Hopefully, you guys can hear me. So, in the Friends, they were their friends were really their family. And they were like 20-somethings, and there were six of them. And again, they handled thorny issues. And the one of the ones that I thought was hysterical that they mentioned was that people would sit in a coffee shop and not be distracted by their telephones. Does anybody want to go back there? <laughs> and anybody remember what the name of the coffee shop was? And again, this coffee shop was in the same building as their apartment complex. Anybody remember what it was called? Are you out there, folks? Yeah, Judy's saying, for me, the shows were seen as um, all the family all together. Yeah. Perk City. Close. Close, Sonia. Actually, it was Central Perk. You got part of it. And the arrangement was that... The, there, there was Rachel and Monica in one apartment, and and Chandler and Joey, and there was a cross, and there was a hallway. And if you remember, lots went on in the hallway. <laughs> I doubt Debbie that you're not cle too clever for trivia, but hey, now you're getting some whether you like it or not. And one of the messages in Friends that I think applies to what we're talking about with community is. That there was a really important thing that there was the, the implied message was there's nothing we would rather be doing than being with our friends. Let that sink in. And most of these people were had divorced parents, so a lot of times the holidays ended up being they were all together with each other because they didn't want to go home or they weren't welcome at home. So that's a change in the family as well as looking at the dwellings. So this is what I'm trying to sort of explain. The next one in that picture that uh, I showed was uh, Three's Company. 
Now this was between 1976 and 1984 it was aired and it was took place in Santa Monica, California. And it was a apartment complex again we're, we're sticking with the apartment complexes and it was a multi-bedroom apartment which is pretty typical and the story was that uh, the two women in it lost their housemate or their roommate they called it roommate then and Jack who is is the guy in all this fell asleep because he was drunk at the party for the person that was going away <laughs> LaDonna says it's on my TV right this minute. Oh my God. Dee, 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 dee. <laughs> oh my God. That's too funny. <clears throat> and one of the things that, that was about this time, that talking about the difference in, in uh, gender and people living with each other of opposite genders, one of the things that Janet told the landlord was that Jack was gay in order to have it possible for him to live with the girls. Ah, uh, thank God things have changed, right? And there was lots of in and out of the apartment and in and out of, of their lives at the same time. There was a lot of movement. So moving right along, houses. So that was apartments and sitcoms, and now back to houses. It's not Father Knows Best. And the next one is that I, you know, I got to select them. So, and this is Hot in Cleveland, which was from 2010 to 2015. It was on air. And, and the backstory of this, if you never watched it, even though Betty White was on it, and that is three friends are flying to Paris and they're, something happens with their plane and they end up in Cleveland <laughs> and they decide to stay and lease a house turns out that the person that is the caretaker for the house is Elka and Elka lives in the guest house and yes guess who Elka is anybody you out there it's Betty White yeah anybody watch this I think it's hysterical <clears throat> and the other thing about this is again this is a big house it's kind of unusual. There's three women living in it. No kids at this point that, that I'm aware of. And they have an elder that also lives sort of in and out with them. And one of the things that they choose in this sitcom is, is sort of the antithesis of the characters, la, 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 coming from Los Angeles. And they end up in Ohio. So again, there's this commentary about Midwest, West, etc. The other thing that I loved about this is that they pointed out when I was looking at all of this and the things that I remember is they use an old farmhouse and they have a Victorian era porch on it. And the women sit down on all four of them in this swing, which I think is a little unusual that all four of them but they kind of rock back and forth and back and forth and a lot of the interaction between them is on the back porch and then there is another one and here we have all guys we had all women all guys and no matter what your opinion of Charlie Sheen might be in the world and this is two and a half men it was in 2003 to 2015 and it took place in a Malibu beach house and this is where two brothers live together one's gotten kicked out because he's getting divorced and he brings his son with him and again 2003 to 2015 as you would expect the kid grows up you know in 2015 I think he was like six feet tall <laughs> Um, so again, California lifestyle and two a, a siblings, two guys who are co-parenting a young man, a young kid, a young boy. Really, looking at all these together, you can see how it's a change of the family, and they live in a she sheep Malibu house. 
The next one, we're back to New York, and that is for Kate and Allie. It was on air 1984 to 1989. And they lived together, Kate and Allie, both had children. They were divorced. So again, you're moving into the 80s. Hey, this is the kind of thing that's happening with women. They live under one roof. They have a new home with their children. And they actually then add another wrinkle to this, which is they're, they're dating. And one of the things I loved about this when I was looking at it was, was the research is it was very important that these two women entered the TV. Yeah, I did too, Nat. They entered the, 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 the living room and the, and the scene from separate bedrooms. See, they were, they were, it was very important that, that that was shown in the 80s. We've gone from apartments to houses and now we're going to move on to condominiums and one of our favorite people that lives in a condominium in Seattle would be anybody anybody out there a guy who was a therapist on the radio whose father lived with him his father had been injured in the line of duty as a policeman. Any of you out there? Hello, who is this? this? I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And this was on from 1993 to 2004. Yeah, you're right. It's Frazier. Yeah, Debbie, woo, woo, woo. Yeah, Frazier Crane. And again, he, his brother was around a lot. So we've sort of done a, an interesting thing about women, men, through the, through the decades. So that's just my little take on how sitcoms and housing sort of moved us through almost to the present day. From 1955, or maybe earlier, to 2015. Hopefully you enjoyed that um, because I can always come up with something to talk about with you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Uh, next week, next week, I'm going to be talking about terminology. You know, a lot of people talk, uh, a lot of people talk about community, and I'm going to give you some ideas of what the terminology is for community. And again, if you have things you'd like me to cover, and that is, what do you want to hear about topics? I think I saw one. Uh, questions you might have, and how, you know, what can I do to help you to move forward with what's next for you? I'm here for you and I'm I think in the next couple of weeks I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my webinar topic and I'm also going to run some things by you as to if I were to introduce myself to you what I would say tell your friends to come on Monday afternoons I'm still going to be here and again connection information and action. I want all of us to take action so as we age we have friends, we have community, and we're connected to the world. See you next week everybody. Thank you so much. Women for Living in Community and it's Marianne.